In this video, we'll take things a bit further and go over how we can make a brick generator with HLSL and start adding some customizable color as well. So we've gone over how to create shapes, how to manipulate our UVs a bit, but now what we're going to do is add a little bit more complexity and start going over how we can start to change color or add different colors into our mixtures of, of shapes as well. So this is fairly easy to do and it'll be a little bit of review, but also just adding a little bit more complexity and we're just going to start off with a custom node so a custom node we're going to create and we're going to have two inputs uh, first one being our uvs so we'll add uv and we'll add another input for our grid which is how much we're going to tile these bricks so uv will connect to a texture coordinate and then our grid will connect to a constant two vector a constant two vector because we want to define the tiling in both u and v or x and y in both directions so two values for each one of those directions and we'll put some values in here for now oops i'm just gonna put in maybe 10 and 20 and then what we'll do is add our code to do this tiling so it's going to be really easy we're just going to take our texture coordinates multiply it by our uh tiling here and then run it through a fractional operation so it's giving us values that stay between zero and one uh, so it'll be easy just to tile whatever we do across this whole square this whole grid regardless how many times we're tiling it so in our custom node we're going to add that code to add that code, I'm just going to type it into Visual Studio Code since then it will have syntax highlighting and be easier to read. So let's jump into Visual Studio Code here. And what I'm going to do is start blocking that out. So it's a float to. Two values, we're going to call it text. We're going to make a new float to and it's going to equal fractional of float to and we're going to define UV, so our UV coordinates X times grid X, and grid X means the first value here, and grid Y will be the second value. So UV X times grid X, and then UV Y times grid dot Y. And that's really it. And then we'll just return that result, return text. I'll copy that, put that into our Unreal custom node put it into base color we'll get an error because we're outputting a two values like we're outputting a float two but our custom node says we're outputting a float three so there's like a value mismatch so i'll just change the custom node to output a float two and then we'll see the result so there we go this tiling the uvs and if i change this to five and five we can see it all tiles or three and three and it all it all works so now if this is our UVs, the next thing we have to do is be able to define the size of the brick, whether the brick is like this or whether the brick is a different shape like this. We have to be able to somehow produce a shape that matches the shape of our brick that we're going to define. So if we look at this, this is coordinates between zero and one, just tiled for all these different tiles here. And, you know, 0.5 would be somewhere like here and here, like right in the center. So what we want to do is have a way of checking each one of these coordinates and if they're within a certain range or not within a certain range. And if they're within a certain range, like if they're within maybe this section here, like less than 0.5 on each axis, then we can fill that in with one color or one value and fill in the rest with another color or some other value. So how can we do that? It's really easy. It's just going to be a simple if statement or like a comparison. So I'll go back into Visual Studio Code here and we're going to type that out. And to do that, we're going to add one more control. We're going to add a control for the dimensions of our brick. So under the custom node here, I'm going to add one more input and it's going to be called dim for dimension and I'll connect it up to a constant two vector so we can define the size in both X and Y. I'll just put it at 0.5 and 0.5 for now, just to test it out. And then our code really is just going to be taking that variable and comparing it. So we're going to do something like if, and then we'll do text or texture, x is bigger or equal to our dimensions 
that we're specifying here, dot x. And then we'll use an and or operator or logical or operator. Um, and then we'll do text x is less or equal to negative dim x. And then we can do again and or, and then we'll do text dot y is bigger equal to dim dot y and text dot y is less or equal to negative dim dot y. So that pretty much summarizes all the checking we'll do. I'll check all the kind of dimensions of these two values against our, our UVs. And then if that's true, we're going to return zero. Otherwise, we'll return one. So zero will return a black value, white will t one will return a white value. So we'll this will kind of give us our colors for what will be happening. So let's give this a try. We're going to take all this, throw this into our custom node here, and let's see if that works. And it is. And you'll see it's yellow uh, because I could change this back to a float three. And now we'll get white values. And we can see if it's within the range of our numbers specified here, 0.5 and 0.5, it draws white and if it's not it draws black so it's kind of like inverted but we're able to change now the size of our brick and then we can also change tiling so it might just be easier to set the size to like uh, 0.8 and 0.8 and then just tile more in one direction or another direction to produce the kind of ratio of, of bricks that we want. So there we go. We have something that's kind of working. So if I tile it by 10 and 20 or uh, maybe 8 and 24, we're able to produce our, our bricks. So very easy. Now we have kind of our pattern made. But how do we get the coloring in here? How can we change it so we have customizable coloring? That gets super easy because all we need to do then is just add controls for it. So I'll add another two variables. I'll add one called color brick, C-O-L for color, and then brick. And I'll add another control for color mortar for the paste or the cement in between the bricks. And then we'll just connect those up to constant three vectors, constant three vector because they're colors. They have three values, red, green, and blue. And I'll define one of them to be kind of like a darker red type brick, like that. And then the other one will be kind of more of a tan kind of tone. So there we go. Now, how do we get those colors to actually work in here? Well, we'll just jump back onto our, our code here. Instead of returning zero, we're going to return our variables here that contain the color. So right now, white is this, the part of the brick that would be technically red here. So the color of the brick. So instead of return one, I'm going to return color brick. And instead of return zero, I'm going to return color uh, mortar. And we'll take this, I'll put this as my code now, hit enter, and there we go. We got our colors working with our bricks. And now we pretty much have a customizable brick uh, pattern all done in HLSL. And it's really simple, but now we're kind of getting the hang for how we can add color controls and other things. But there's one more thing that we might want to add to this. Maybe we're not going to use this for bricks. Maybe we're going to use it for something different. For example, if we set the size to be like 0.9 and 0.9, and we keep the tiling even like 15 and 15, we can create like a nice tile instead of a brick. Uh, but when we look at it in the corner here, kind of seems like things don't match up. There's like, these lines that kind of match up, but then there's no line here, no border edge there. And if we look at just one face of this, 
one side has no border, the other side has a border. So how can we keep this kind of perfectly centered if we want to have some sort of offset or control for how we offset these tiles or bricks? How could we do that? So we're going to add one more control, an offset control. So I'm going to go in here and add one more control to the custom node, one more input, and we're going to call it offset. And we're going to make it a constant two vector just to test. And I'll put it at like 0.5 and 0.5 or something for now. And we'll add that to our code. So to add that to our code, that offset, we're going to go here to where we take the UV and we multiply it by the grid. We'll then add our offset. So we'll add our offset.x. And then for the y part, we'll add our offset.y. We'll take that code, put it back into Unreal, see if it works. Okay, now we have control for the offset. So you can see this corner here. And if I were to change the offset values, it offsets it differently. Now, if we wanted to match up just perfectly in those corners, um, right now it's kind of like a guessing game. We have to change it, but it, it really shouldn't be. All we'd have to do is just take our dimensions of our, our brick here or of our tile or whatever you want it to be and divide it by two. So we could just drag it to a divide node and you could hard code this in, but I'm just going to do it with a divide node like this and then plug it into offset divider dimensions by two. And now it perfectly matches up and forms a nice corner there if our brick is evenly sized. And now that we have that, you could technically take something like this, uh, make the colors different, you know, maybe make it white and black. And then also use this for something like opacity. So I could change this to a masked material and use it for opacity and color. And now we kind of have, actually we'll have to invert it for opacity. So I could do a one minus, there we go. And we can end up with like a, a net like texture as well. So a lot of things you can do with this, but just starts to, to get you thinking about how you can completely create things from just simple HLSL code or even just procedural nodes and start to produce more complex things that you can reuse. So that's pretty much it. We're able to produce something now that's fully controllable. That gives us a lot of power to, to make different things and different patterns and add custom controls. And we'll start adding a bit more complexity, but hopefully this starts to make a bit more sense and also starts to give you some ideas of other things that you could make and start to produce by even just using simple lines of code. We don't have a lot of code here. It's only seven lines of code and we can make some procedural tiles or, or bricks. So not too bad. And if you've enjoyed this video, like, subscribe. And if you're part of the Patreon, uh, you'll also be able to find kind of everything we've gone over in this video and more in a PDF that's available for download as well.